हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ट्रिक एज द वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमी इज स्ट्रगलिंग विद द स्लो डाउन नेगेटिव इंटरेस्ट रेट पॉलिसी हैज बिकम अ न्यू नॉर्मल टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज दिस नेगेटिव इंटरेस्ट रेट पॉलिसी हाउ इट इम्पैक्ट्स द इकोनॉमी एंड फ्यू कॉन्सेप्ट दैट विल हेल्प अस इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस नेगेटिव इंटरेस्ट रेट पॉलिसी फर्स्ट इज इन्फ्लेशन इन सिंपल टर्म इन्फ्लेशन is like too much of money chasing too little things means we have more money and less thing we have more demand and less supply what will be the result the prices of the things will rise and if this continues for a longer period of time then this is called inflation next is real interest rate interest rates are the rates at which borrowing lending etc takes place when you deposit your money in the bank you get some interest on that money when you borrow some money you will have to pay some interest then what is real interest rate during inflation consider that you borrow rupees 100 and you will have to pay rupees 10 as interest on that money so today you have borrowed 100 rupees you will have to pay rupees 10 as interest per month but in the next month what amount of things you could have bought from rupees 10 have decreased for example today you can buy 1 kg of sugar from rupees 10 but next month the price of sugar will rise to rupees 12 now you cannot buy 1 kg of sugar from rupees 10 so the value of rupees 10 has decreased but you keep paying the bank rupees 10 only you are not paying rupees 12 so in a way real interest rate for you is rupees 8 next month because you are benefiting rupees 2 you are paying just rupees 10 means 1 kg of sugar in just rupees 8 so during inflation real interest rate for borrowing is less inflation here is rupees 2 interest is rupees 10 so real cost of borrowing for you is 10 minus 2 is equal to rupees 8 this is your real cost of borrowing or real rate of interest after adjusting with the inflation so during inflation borrowers get benefited while the lenders suffer obviously banks will suffer because they will be receiving 10 rupees but the value of 10 rupees has now become rupees 8 next is deflation the opposite happens during deflation too less money chasing much more things means there is more supply and less demand because less money this will lead to fall in prices and if this fall in prices continues sustains for a longer period of time then it is called deflation during deflation real interest rate increases in inflation we saw the real interest rate decreases while during deflation real interest rate increases for example in eurozone at this point of time the main interest rate is 0.5% but the real interest rate is much higher that is 0.65% consider that you have borrowed rupees 100 from the bank and you are paying 5 rupees as interest on this 100 rupees but due to deflation the value of this 5 rupees becomes rupees 6 it means that from rupees 5 you can now buy things worth rupees 6 so if you are paying interest of rupees 5 to the bank you are losing money during deflation because the value of your money has increased therefore during deflation borrowers tend to lose and during inflation borrowers tend to gain now let us try to understand the concept of negative interest rate policy currently the global economy is struggling with the problem of deflation during deflation people have less money they spend less means fall in aggregate demand fall in aggregate demand means overall demand decreases which will lead to fall in output or production if output or production will not be decreased it will lead to more reduction in prices so output ultimately falls and this leads to unemployment cutting down the interest rate counters this less money it gives more money and then cycle changes cutting the interest rates means banks have more money to lend they lend more 
people have more money to spend they spend more this leads to rise in aggregate demand and ultimately production has to increase means more employment but this policy is not effective when the deflation is severe in that condition the central banks adopt the policy of negative interest rate this negative interest rate means that depositors have to pay money to the banks instead of receiving the money from the banks when you deposit money in the bank you receive some interest on that money but when there is negative interest rate you will have to pay money to the bank to keep your money safe for example if there is negative interest rate of minus 0.2 percent in that case depositors tend to lose they have to pay money to the banks but this negative interest rate policy helps the borrowers borrowers gain from this negative interest rate policy they will have to pay less to the bank means they will now invest more more money to invest more investment more investment means stimulus to the economy and this regeneration in the economy however there is a drawback in this negative interest rate policy because when there is negative interest rate policy what depositors will do they will try to take money out of the banks and stuff in their mattresses because cash carries an implicit interest rate of 0% so why they will pay money to the banks when there are negative interest rate the depositors will take out the money and hold it secondly some banks will be hesitant to pass on this burden of negative interest rate on depositors in the fear of losing customers to other financial institutions which means they will try to internalize the cost they will try to pay the cost which will lead to erosion in their capital also sometimes some instruments such as mortgages lending etc are attached to the interest rate in that case they will lose money this will again lead to erosion of their capital positive impact of the negative interest rate policy comes in the area of foreign exchange when the investors tend to move abroad in the search of better returns for their investment this will lead to depreciation of the currency depreciation in the currency means rise in the prices of imports for example today the value of rupee versus dollar is 67 so for every 1 dollar we have to pay rupees 67 tomorrow consider the the currency depreciates and for each 1 dollar we have to pay rupees 70 so in comparison to dollar there is depreciation in the value of our currency if i buy anything worth of 1 dollar i will have to pay rupees 70 instead of rupees 67 buying means importing in this way there will be rise in the prices of imports rise in prices of imports will ultimately help in combating the menace of deflation and how it will counter deflation because when there will rise in prices of imports imports will decline and there will be rise in exports rise in exports means more money in the economy more money will ultimately lead to more demand and more demand will counter deflation so this was the concept involving negative interest rate policy hope i was able to explain the concepts if you have any confusion please post your views and feedback and any question in the comment box you can like our facebook page www.facebook.com/trick.exam.in and don't forget to like this video subscribe to our channel see you in the next video